Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kyra and I am here today to do an intuitive tarot reading with you all in my Witchy Bullet Journal. When I was initially planning the videos for this week, I thought I would be doing, for today's video, I thought it would be about just talking about how I do intuitive tarot in my journal, but I legit was just struggling. And today's just been a struggle kind of day. And so I thought, okay, well I've done a video about my intuitive tarot decks and I done a video where I just talked about um, intuition and how I work with it generally speaking both of those are up above in the cards you can check them out I'm like you know what um, I'm just gonna to start off my month working with intuition especially because as I'm filming this now it is the 29th of July even though you're seeing this on like the 5th of August. So it's like, you know what? I'm just going to make a spread for starting off. So if you're watching along and you've decided to do, to focus on intuitive tarot work with me, then I invite you to join me for this spread. I will put the spread uh, positions in the description box. I have not tested this spread. I just made it up today. And I wrote it in this extra box here on my on my moon setup because because that seemed right and um you can check out look at this. Look at it. Look at it. It's so good. This is the shimmering veil tarot. And you can check out my journal setup video linked up above in the cards. Anywho, I have this page here. Um which I was like, all right, cool, we can use this because I haven't done a new moon reading. I'm not feeling good. I'm really not feeling good today. My head really hurts. Um, actually, you know what? No, we're going to do this intuitive tarot style. So how I work with tarot intuitively um, is I just free ball it, basically. So this is my into unlock your intuition spread. So let me let me turn the camera to the side so I can work. Unlock your intuition reading. And it is July 29th. My wife's birthday is in two days as I'm watching this. Or as I'm, as I'm watching this. I'm not watching this. As I'm filming this. So if you're watching this, uh, say, say happy birthday, Zariah, in the comments. And I can read her all your birthday wishes. Um, okay. So my colors that I'm really using for, I'm going to count this in my August colors. I, and these are the colors I'm using together for, for my headers and stuff. And look at how beautiful they are. Okay. So this is how I started when I really started doing tarot readings, where I would just, I would write on the top of my journal what type of what the tarot reading was about. I'd, I'd like title it. And then what I would do is I would write down the question and I would look at it and I would answer it. So the first spread position boop, is a card to represent my intuition right now. If that first clip was loud, I'm sorry. I didn't fully click in that my air conditioner was on. I think I want a soul card for this. When I came up with this idea, I was like, well, like, I have to use my decks that I talked about in Monday's video. As I said, that's up above. I, I have to use those decks to, 
to see what it's about. Like the whole point of this month is to prioritize using my shimmering veil and my soul cards. So I have to use them. I admit, I admit I'm feeling a bit nervous. There's a lot of things going on right now. Um, so there, there's a lot of things going on right now and I don't think I've ever done, I don't think I've ever purposely tried to do a super intuitive reading on camera. So I'm feeling a little nervous and self-conscious a card to represent my intuition right now don't have a way I'm gonna put the word split that's what I see that's the first thing that comes up to my mind It's two halves. They're together and they're both trying to... They're both trying to connect with like, for lack of a better way to put it, we'll say the higher realm. I don't quite know how I fully feel about the idea of like that we all have a higher self and all of these connotations that go with these things kind of are hard for me to work my brain through. But... what it's like both of them are individually trying to connect instead of working together i'm also struck by the fact that it's black and white and i say that specifically because i get stuck in black and white thinking um it's either this way or it's that way it's it's not both working together it's either this or that you know it's this or that um and I think that split this or that feeling is what is really coming up. So even though they both look at peace within themselves, it's not at peace within the whole. So what I do in this case is like, so how this really differs from the way I do other tarot readings is like, if you look at this, all of the space for each card is even. I set, I, I wrote it all out. I counted, I gave a set space to each card. Here, I keep it open and I write as much as the hell I want. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write about this. I'll play some music or do a voiceover or something for you or skip. All right, I'll do something, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write about this um, splitting self. Another thing that really changes when I do this kind of work is the style in which I write. Um, like I'm not, I don't even do it on purpose. It just kind of happens. Um, the more intuitive I get, the, the more different my writing gets. So here, um, 
here's an example from my August predictions, which the video of me doing this is up above in the cards. The Ten of Pentacles came out blocking the Queen of Cups. That's the lesson. The Ten of Pents is me going for a specific outcome when I need to surrender to the outcome as an unknown. Trust that I'll love the outcome and surrender to the journey there. Um, that's how I talk to... Whoops. That's how I talk to myself. But when I do this, it's like... It doesn't sound like me when I read it. Ow, I poked myself in the eye with my glasses when I was trying to... I was just trying to take them so I could do this. But I poked myself. Woohoo! Um... <laughs> It doesn't sound like me. My language gets flowerier. And a thing that happens in my brain is that I can I can hear the words in my head. And I just know my job is purely to get the words on the paper. Not to edit them. Um, so the words just spill out. And it, the language is a lot more flowery. And that tends to be how I know I'm in a good reading space for myself and this is actually why I've struggled lately with reading for myself because I've had trouble I've I've had trouble getting into this headspace so what I wrote is oh and I I do write it as if I am talking to myself as if I am a different person so I don't say I am this I am that and I actually highly recommend this if you're journaling readings for yourself because then when you read it back, it's like you're reading a letter that is addressed to you kind of thing. So I do, and, and that's something that I just naturally did. And then in hindsight, it was like, oh, this is, this is good. Um, so the card to represent my, myself or my intuition right now, you are split too caught up, too caught in the black and white, the this or that too caught up to see the whole to be the whole pieces of you are in harmony within their individual selves without being in harmony in the whole your intuition is in beautifully individualized pieces and yet it is split like that's just not like it's even clunky to try and talk like that when reading it anywho so that's the first position now because i've written everything i need to write if there was a guidebook at this point, I would look at the guidebook to see if any words come up. And that's kind of how I validate myself and how I helped myself learn that I could intuitively read tarot. Um, because I would write a bit about it and then I would read the book and potentially validate it or find other words that really stand out. Which I'll do with the Shimmering Veil tarot in a moment. So let's see. Two, what's blocking my intuition? Okay, so there's that shimmering veil look. I love how well. Here we go. What's blocking my intuition? And the important thing is I'm trying not to read into the the card meanings I'm trying to just read the the energy come on with that shuffle with the pretty fucking gilding oh I'm Okay, what's blocking my intuition? All right, focus. What's blocking my intuition? What's blocking my intuition? What's blocking my intuition? What's blocking my intuition? <laughs> of course it is.
This is really easy. Give me a minute. King of Swords. What's blocking my intuition? Thinking, thinking, thinking. All it is is thinking. All you do is thinking. And then you think about why you can't feel things, yet more thinking. It's because you're thinking and the answers don't lie in your head. They lie in your heart. So stop fucking thinking. That was extremely easy. Um, but let's see. Oh my God, I opened right to it. So let's just see what it says. Um, taking some rare time off to hunt in the mountains, the king of air will usually be found in positions of power, blah, blah. Really what we need down here is reversed because this is a shadow position. An intellectual man whose mental gymnastics have become his undoing. He is incapable of commitment, emotionally lost, pulling nearest and dearest into codependency and confusion can be viciously angry and destructive. His mental gymnastics have become his undoing. Sometimes I will put a direct quote. There we go. All right. Well, that was easy. I don't really have a set like um, layout. Like I didn't plan a layout. What I tend to do is exactly what you can see me doing here is I, I put my cards up as I go. I'll show them all together to you at the end, but number three, how can I unblock it? I can literally hear a voice in my head telling me you can unblock it by stop fucking thinking. Um, it's the voice of the King of Swords and he's pissed. Okay. How can I unblock this? 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 Okay. How can I unblock my intuition? How can I unblock it? It's my life path card. Strength. I'll read it to you again after, but I have to write this message down before it is out of my head. So what I wrote with my strength card here is return to sender, return to self. You know yourself, you know your state, you know your flow. It's time to forgive yourself and move forward. It's time to stop equating me, being the intuition, with the negative thoughts in your head. You know if they were telling you the truth, your life would look very different right now. You can be a lion and still cry. So will you please just be you? This time, I feel like I'm missing something. So I definitely want to look in the guidebook and see. 
The lion, alchemical symbol of wild, natural, instinctive drives, is often depicted in medieval literature as being subdued by a young woman. This is the ongoing engagement between our conscious and the unconscious minds, here entitled Strength. The lion depicts what Freud called the id, the instinctive, needy, childish part within each of us. Traditionally, the card is about courage, facing the beast within, coming to terms with it, and finally harnessing its energy in partnership, strengthened by the very act of facing our hidden selves. Paradoxically, what we most despise and fear often holds the key toward greatest gifts. In strength, we learn to communicate, to negotiate with our unconscious minds, persuading our id to work with us rather than against us, to be strong enough and honest enough to integrate both higher and lower parts of ourselves, to fully accept the needy dark sides of ourselves is a feat few manage and one revisited again and again in the tarot. Each time, as in the lovers, we need to choose integrity and consciousness rather than fear or gratification. Okay. Encountering the darkness, uh, suggested meanings, encountering the darkness within you, your fears, confusions, desires, anger, sexual urge, mm, sexual urges, transforming it into unconscious, into conscious self-knowledge, emerging from trials and difficulties with increased inner strength and endurance, courage, hope, calm assertion. Reversals, repression of your unconscious drives and passions, leading to tension, fear, and pessimism, binding all natural drives and desires in the iron grip of the ego, resulting in bridget, brittle rigidity. Surrender to the unchecked passions of the instincts. Okay, I'm going to write that down because surrender is my word of the year. Here's the thing. Um, this bothers me a little bit. Because... The idea of id, ego, shit bothers me too. Like this part, encountering the darkness within you, dash, and now it's listing the darkness, your fears, confusions, desires, anger, sexual urges. The, those aren't dark. Let's go with the example of sexual urges. A sexual urge can manifest from light just as much as it can manifest from dark. Same with our desires. Same with our anger. What about righteous fucking anger? Same with confusion. Fear. The problem I have with a lot of stuff when we get into the way the guidebook described this, which... Makes me glad that it's such an intuitive deck because I'm feeling very meh about this guidebook now is humans have this idea that all of these things equal shadow and all of these things equal light and the shadow is bad and the light is good. And this comes from many, many, many places. Um... I propose that I don't have to just accept the fact, um, the fact that I don't have to just accept my fears, my confusion, my anger, my sexual urges, other things listed. I don't have to accept those as dark parts of myself and just accept that they're there. They are not inherently dark. They are neutral. It is entirely subjective and dependent on every single situation. They are not neutral. And this actually reminds me of a part of a reading. I think it was my past life reading from Lisa. Um, it was definitely a reading from Lisa. I think it was my past life. I'm pretty sure where she talked about me needing to like go through. No, it wasn't my past life. Um, it was a different reading, but she talked about me needing to go through the boxes in my brain um, the boxes that I had decided this is good and this is bad and going through them and looking at the things with the fresh insight that um, most things are not one way or the other. Um, her wording I can't remember exactly and this is 
through the my lens of belief. And my belief is that there's no such thing as pure good or pure evil. There are things people can do that are evil. Evil in and of itself is not a, a pure, concrete concept. And I just, I don't believe that there, that people are either all good or all evil or that people are all like darkness is just dark. It, that, that doesn't work for me because I've met the evil within my, the evil within myself. I've met my darkness. I've faced my toxicity and that was not coming from a place of maliciously wanting to harm. It was coming from a place of pain and these things. It was, it was not healthy. It was not okay. Um, at my heart, though, I know I'm not an evil person, even though I, I, I was the toxic one in my marriage. I was the one hurting my wife, not, not physically and not intentionally, but I was causing a lot of pain without meaning to. And in my experience, it's just it. this. It's not so black. It, it's not this or that. A sexual urge is not good or bad. It is both. We are both. Everything is both. It depends entirely on this whole set of circumstances around it. Um, so I feel like the thing I was supposed to get from this guidebook was that quote, surrender to the unchecked passions of the instincts, because that, that is what I think people need more of. Um, anyways, I'll stop ranting about that. I'm sorry. It just really, really bothers me. And I think it causes a lot of grief in our society. Anyways, the next position is ways to work with with it. Ways to work with my intuition. So let's see. I just want to be very clear that this is what I believe. I believe it passionately. Um, I believe it passionately. I believe it strongly. It is my belief though. And I understand that not everyone will agree with me and that's okay. Um, as long as, as far as I'm concerned, as long as we're walking through life, trying to do our best, trying not to cause harm, actively working to undo harm or to not cause, cause harm, um, then it's okay. And the thing is, here's what it really boils down to. We don't get to choose what is harmful to other people. We only get to choose what is uh, and define what is harmful to ourselves. Right? The world is not black and white. The world is gray. It's the spot in between. I can't. I can't sit there and say that my way of belief won't be harmful to someone else because it might. I don't know what's harming other people until other people choose to tell me. And then it's about how I choose to react to them sharing that with me. And I think that's really what it boils down to. The only thing I know is the things that are causing me harm. And so it's my job in life to focus on the things that are causing me harm and to make my boundaries to help me with that and to listen and look for the signs that I might be causing someone else harm. And then if someone else comes up to me and says, hey, Kyra, you're causing me harm, it is my job to show up as a compassionate fucking human being and do better. Everyone is different. 
Okay, ways to work with it. Ways to work with my intuition. Ways to work with my intuition. Ways to work with my intuition. This is coming out clean. Oh, look at that image. This comes to me as a song. This, I wrote the lyrics to a song. It's a chant. I will put a subtitle of the person who wrote it. And it's very easy. It just goes, Flow and ebb, ebb and flow. Flow and ebb, ebb and flow. Breathe. And it just repeats over and over and over as much as you like. And that's the message. And then just a little bit under is simply show up, try, and go with the flow. Um, I don't need the guidebook for that one. I was just told to go with the flow. And I, the flow tells me I don't want to look at the guidebook for that one. So I'm not going to. Maybe I'll throw out the guidebook. Last one. How will it feel? Or show up when it's unblocked. Mm. Oh, I don't know if I want to use... A soul card or a shimmering veil? I think a soul card. Um, hmm. let's see. Okay. I want, this is the end card. This is the last card. And I'm feeling a bit torn at this moment because I could do a soul card here. Which, to bookend it, would be just wonderful. Um, and then, it would be beautiful because we started here and we end here. Hold on. Okay, all right, we're going to end with a soul card. Can't lie, there's a card in this deck that I really love. It's my absolute favorite, and I kind of hope it shows up because it would be so beautiful. Um, it's, the pain, it's the one I call a pain weaver sounds sad but it is it is my favorite card and I want to be her so badly um, so how will it feel 
or show up when it's unblocked. How will it feel or show up when it's unblocked? That's two. We just want one, please. This one. That doesn't feel right. I'm going to try again. How will it feel when it's unblocked? Or how will it show up when it's unblocked? That's two. I, I really... Just one, please. I know I don't have a card, but I have words in my head, so... Okay, so here's the thing. This, I got my message. I didn't get a card. I'm still going to pull up to see if I can get a card to go with this. I'm going to read this to you, and I need you to know this is intensely vulnerable for me to do this. So I'm going to be very um, keen to watch the comment section because I don't, this isn't my words. This isn't how I talk to myself. It's, this is not me. This is a message for me. And where it came from, I don't know. Did it come from my guides? I, a higher self? I, I don't know. I've never known. I've just always done this. I, I fucking had automatic writing once. Um, maybe I'll tell that story. Um, if you want to hear the story of my one time I had automatic writing, let me know in the comments down below. Um, so I'll share this. But this is intensely personal. And my son is about to walk through the door. They just, they're just coming back from swimming. Sorry, my, my family came home. So, if you comment on what I wrote, just, like, be nice, okay? How will it feel show up when it's unblocked? The message I got was, lost, you will be found, free to return to your home of who you are, who you have always been. So long your journey has been, and so far have you traveled, only to come back to yourself, having learned much, exactly as you were meant to. And now, my darling one, now you have your chance to learn how to use it all. The love and gifts we poured into you for your creation. We are so proud, and we cannot wait to see you shine. We all love you. Shine brightly for us, star child. So I'm just not going to say anything about that because I'm feeling vulnerable and I'm just going to find a card to go with the message. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I mean...
there we have it. There we go. And there it is. Um, that's my Unlock Your Intuition reading spread that I created. I like it. It's a good, good spread. Good reading. Um, seems very effective. Definitely put me in the headspace where these cards did, perhaps. I'm not sure. They look stunning together. This one on the end feels a bit out of place. But, um, there we go. So that's what it's like when I do an intuitive tarot reading. Um, I'm going to end this video here. As I said, I'm just feeling extremely vulnerable. So please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Please do for me um, to let me know if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification to come on back soon. If you enjoyed learning about me as a reader, I do offer readings. I am a pro. My website and my Patreon and all the details to contact me in whatever way are in the description box and you can check that out. Um, at the time you're seeing this, my website and services are still on sale. Huge sale. Ooh, yay. Um, and stay tuned, I guess. I, and I'm, I'm filming this on the 29th. I can't wait to see what comes out of this month. Um, it's going to be interesting. So I will talk to you soon. Lots of love. Bye.